want to talk to you about this PPP loan forgiveness application. 20 hours ago, SBA and the Treasury, they pull out something new. And this is so new and people just start looking at it. If you go on internet, you haven't really seen anything yet because everyone is still digesting. A lot of people hung up on that number they put on the 2483. Like when you apply, you probably put 37, you put 50, who knows, you put maybe a number that you understood at that time. Let's just forget about that number. That is, that is not the number you need to remember, okay? So now we look at 35, 08. There are 11 pages. So I am going to go back. I'm going to pull up the, re the screen for, um, for that form so we can look at it together. So that's 11 pages. So page one and two is instruction. It gave you definition of uh, what's in the form. So one and two. So page three is calculation form. Okay, and know that page three is actually going to be filled out the last because you have to do other calculations before come over here. So this is your page three. But I want you to notice that in your page three, let's just kind of generally look at it. Those are not difficult. You see here, they ask you for covered period or alternative payroll covered period. And you need to choose one of the two. All right, so this is where you decide on that. Then this is payroll and the non-payroll cost. This is a payroll cost, and this is your mortgage interest, this is your rent, and this is your utility. All right, so then here it tells you, and this portion, this portion is to calculate your full-time FTE. This is the effort of the government trying to figure out whether you should be reduced, see? full-time employee reduction. And this is where the number would come in. And they flow from Schedule A. So Schedule A is on page six. And so now we go through number three, okay? Number three, page number four. Number four is easy. Number four is whoever did the calculation for you. For example, if community CPA did this forgiveness work for you, we will sign off on here. See, signature of authorized representative of the borrower. And then you can have your attorney, your CPA, or your mom and dad and your brother, sister, anybody who did that for you or yourself to sign for that, right? Now, other than that, so we came to the page five, right? This is page five. Page five is the instruction for Schedule A. What is Schedule A? Hey, this is not the 1040 Schedule A. This is totally different. On um, this Schedule A, and it calculates, and this Schedule A will help you to start filling out the numbers. In So here, here this one is Schedule A is all, all about your eight weeks. This is not about your history. This is not about your past. This is the eight weeks you did cash compensation. See the box one, the box two, what are they? They are on page nine. That's why I, I say to you that you start from page nine. Page nine tell you how to do the calculation. Page nine is all about, page nine is all about the eight weeks. It's not about the past and not about the first quarter, not about the February 15, 2019, it's eight weeks. The government give you detailed instruction. It says that you gave me your employee's name, you gave me the cash compensation you did for the eight weeks, your average FTE for that eight weeks, how much you, you put in your, the hours you did, maybe you are half time, full time, and then they want you to calculate the salary divided by our wages reduction. So you would calculate based on this Excel. Of course, I don't recommend you to use this form. You go create your own and calculate your eight weeks. Box one, box two, box three, box four, five. They are all related to your page three. And if, you, if we go back to page three, you will remember right here, see the box one, box two, and all of them are here. So you start with the bottom. And then, 
page seven. Page seven and eight is an instruction for schedule a worksheet. Okay, and the nine and ten. The nine is the worksheet itself. It's really meant for you to go to get a different worksheet to work if you have more than how many here employees, right? And right in here, there is a safe harbor reduction. And this is the story I will tell you in a calculation. I have an example for you. And if you have done this one, my dear, if you satisfied your safe harbor is met, you don't have to do all of these up here, okay? And now, so what happened to your page 10 and 11? Page 10 and 11 is just instruction to you, tell you what to include. So you're gonna put it on top of your application. You're gonna add your PPP loan forgiveness calculation form. That is page three. And you're gonna add schedule A. That is your page six. And you're gonna add all these documentation that you pull and your calculation that they didn't give you the, the history of calculation. And then you will fill up right here, uh, whether you are uh, veterans or not and things like that, they have a, a demographics collection right here. And then you are done. This is the safe harbor. Step number one, they want you to calculate the average full-time employee between February the 15, 2020 to April 26, 2020. This is a totally different period. It's not the one we talk about on the first quarter, the first two months of FTE uh, of the year, and also the February 15, 2019 and the June 30th. It's a totally different period. Just keep in mind, this is this. This is the safe harbor calculation. You are going to calculate full-time employee uh, number, how many you have, from February the 15th to April 26th. So pretend it is five. Now, step number two, total FTE for the pay period that covered February the 15th. You hear me? So you have a pay period that February the 15th is inside. And in that pay period, what is your full-time employee number? For example, it is 10. Of course, from February the 15th to the end of April, that was the hardest time for COVID-19, all right? So a lot of people went out of job and your FTE should be down and that would be expected, but they want to know on February the 15th, that pay time, what is your number? Now, you notice that I didn't write step three. I don't want you to think that I forgot because that step three is not relevant right now. The step four, total FTE for the pay period contains June 30th, 2020. Did you hear me? So you need to know the total FTE before, by June 30th, what is your total FTE? The actual number. Pretend it is 10. Because a lot of, like for our state, we opened, you know, yesterday. Okay? So maybe you already gone back to 10. So by June 30th. So maybe you didn't really do that by June, uh, you know, by June 25. By June 15, you are not there yet. But by June 30th, you, you are, okay? If you did that, if you did that. If step four is greater or equals to step two, what you spent in payroll cost within that eight weeks time is what you are going to be forgiven. Let me cover the examples because it's so straightforward and easy. It will answer some of your question already if I do it. Okay, example A, received on April 15, 400,000. And April 15 to June 10, PPP within eight weeks, and the safe harbor is met. The number of employees by June 30th is done, is good. And uh, so I'm on June 10th, and uh, I, finish, I finish my uh, eight weeks on June 10th. Maybe I didn't meet 
or I meet. It doesn't matter because on by June thirtieth I met, and uh, now what happened to me? During the eight weeks, I paid out wages seventy eight thousand, and I rent uh, and the utility twenty two thousand, and I restored the number of employee on June thirtieth to ten FTE. Ten was the number from before, and so the hundred percent is the hundred percent is forgiven. Example number two. And on April 13, funding 100,000. And the PPP within eight weeks time frame on eligible items. And the safe harbor is met. 10 employee restored on June 15. Okay? Uh, because the, 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 the program, the eight weeks is done on June 1st. But they only restored the 10 on the 15. Outside of the eight weeks. Restored outside of the eight weeks before that only before that only five employees were working during the eight weeks now that five people that five people it is paid fifteen thousand three hundred eighty four each remember i have this uh maximum so you increase the five people salary so much that you used up seventy eight thousand dollars totally used up and then you have your rent utility and a restored number of the employee on June 15. So on June 15, and you literally um, to, uh, to February the 15, 2020 time. So you restored the number of employee back to the February the 15, 2020 time. Remember that safe harbor calculation for that pay period? So let's say it was 10. So on June 15, before June 30th, you restored that back. And you actually had 10 working. You still get it 100% forgive because, because you have safe harbor rule met. You met that and you spend it. You spend 78000 and you spend within the, the, the requirement. You didn't pay people $100,000 in eight weeks. You only did 15384 times five and it's roughly 78000 Number three example, this is my last example. Okay, so you are sole proprietor and you went fill up the 2483 form and you did an average, you, you calculate your payroll expenses by using schedule C line 31. That's what the banker did for you. So you divided that by 12, you figured, oh yeah, I get paid. Um, so you got 7,000, I divide by 2.5. You got paid $2,800 a month. So the banker took 2,800 times 2.5 and made a 7,000 and then they put in one because you're a sole proprietor, you're one employee. So that application went, you got so lucky and you received $7,000. And you received the 7,000 on May 15, 2020 and you are sole proprietor. Now your question to me is, look, I don't run payroll for myself. I'm sole proprietor. And what do I do? Uh, can I pay myself three thousand five hundred dollars uh, for um, you know for the two two months worth uh, for the eight weeks? I use up the seven thousand dollars. Can I get can I get uh, that all uh, forgiven? The answer is yes, because because and you wrote checks to yourself from your business account if you have two separate accounts. Write a check to yourself for 3,500 for the first four weeks, then the next four weeks, another 3,500, and also prove that you will pay estimated tax on that with Social Security Medicare estimated in there. So how do you do that? Easy, you go to irs.gov and you pay estimated tax for 2020. So proprietor, whatever you make is your payroll. So that should not make you go run payroll somewhere. No, you don't need that to pay that money for that. So fill up. So I say to you, if you're a sole proprietor, you only need to fill up the page three, four, and six. And attach the 10 and 11 and assign it and you're done. So easy.